Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from across the world. Our headlines Oregon's Attorney General sues Trump administration in the US over federal deployment in Portland. Ecuador's election body cancels the registration of four political parties, including Rafael Correa, since the revolution. Syria holds its third parliamentary election since the outbreak of war in 2011, and South African teachers protest demanding closure of schools after major spread among students. We begin with the United States where the deployment of armed security forces to quell protests in the city of Portland in Oregon has attracted widespread outrage. State and local officials have reacted strongly against a series of detentions that may have been characterized to be just short of abduction. On Sunday, the Attorney General of Oregon State, Ellen Rosenblum, filed a lawsuit against the Donald Trump administration over the unlawful detention of protesters. Earlier in July, the DHS under the Acting Secretary of Homeland Security, Chad Wolf, had been deploying federal forces in the state of Oregon to disperse protests. Trump had previously stated his willingness to deploy these federal forces to quell protests, even threatening to do so if the opposition Democratic Party-run states and cities did not do so. On Saturday, protesters outside the Portland Police Association building faced tear gas and what is called less lethal munitions from federal forces. They justified their attack by having the demonstration declared a riot. Several journalists at the scene also said that they had been intimidated and attacked by the police officers. For over a week, protesters have alleged that they have been taken to unmarked vehicles by security forces and detained for hours before being presented at a court. Citizens of Portland have been conducting nightly protests against racism and police killings ever since the murder of George Floyd on May 25th in Minneapolis. We now go to Ecuador, where the National Electoral Council of the CNE on Sunday suspended the registration of four political parties, including the Social Commitment Movement for the Citizen Revolution, led by former Prime President Rafael Correa. The move will effectively ban them from taking part in general elections next year. Apart from the Citizen Revolution, Libertad es Pueblo, Justicia Social and Podemos are the other parties who have been taken out of registration. The move came in response to a request from the State Controller General's office that said that there were irregularities in the registration process of the four political parties. The CNE granted 10 days to the legal representatives of the parties to present their defence. The Citizen Revolution, however, rejected a decision and announced that it would take part and win the upcoming elections. In an official statement, the party denounced the suspension as a new attempt to prevent its members from contesting the elections. The party had broken away from the Pais Alliance by, and was formed by dissidents of the Lenin Moreno administration after he adopted neoliberal and austerity policies. The party had previously faced troubles registering too. Earlier this year on April 7th, Ecuador's National Court of Justice sentenced Rafael Correa to eight years in prison on bribery and corruption charges. Critics and observers have pointed out that these charges are blatantly false. He was also barred from electoral politics for 25 years. In our next story, war ravaged Syria held its third parliamentary elections on Sunday in the midst of the pandemic and economic crisis. Voting in more than 7,500 polling stations located all across the country and they included the newly captured areas of southern Idlib. The elections were originally scheduled to be held in April. They were twice postponed due to the COVID pandemic. Results are expected to be announced early today. Millions of refugees forced to live outside the country due to the war were not able to participate in the elections. Syrians living under the Turkish-backed Turkish rebel-held areas in the north of the country are also unable to vote. Prior elections to 250 seat assembly are held every four years. More than 2,100 candidates, including 200 women, are contesting. Posters, banners and photographs of the campaigning candidates were displayed across the country. President Bashar al-Assad's ruling Arab Socialist Ba'ath Party is the main contender. The party won 200 seats in the previous election held in 2016, with independent candidates and smaller parties taking the rest. National rebuilding was the most prominent issue after over nine years of war, international sanctions and the fallout of the pandemic. The polls were conducted in a stable and peaceful manner. Voter turnout numbers have not yet been released. In the last polls in 2016, the turnout stood at 57%. The new parliament will clear the candidates for the next presidential election scheduled to be held in 2021. And finally, as the number of COVID-19 cases among students and teachers continues to rise in South Africa, teachers' unions have mounted a countrywide campaign to close down schools. The Educators' Union of South Africa will be running daily hour-long picket lines outside schools. Many of its members are also boycotting classes and holding demonstrations to protest the government's push to force the reopening of schools that began last month. Ever since the reopening, no significant protest has been made, says the Educators' Union, its representative Kabelo Mahalo Bhagwane told People's Dispatch that schools often shut down for more than a week after every outbreak, making it impossible to fully reopen and continue with classes. Unions have alleged rampant corruption in the tenders and contracts worth hundreds of millions of rands given out by the Department of Public Education for PPE, sanitizers, disinfectants and water tanks to the schools. Many are even said to have become millionaires through corrupt contracts that overpriced these essential supplies. 
That's all we have time for today. Keep watching People's Dispatch and visit our website at peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Yeah,